Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm severely tortured. Uh, say your name for the audience. Hello, my name is Ember, and I just watched Rainbow Rocks. Uh, and this is our thoughts on Rainbow Rocks. Uh, so let's start with the person who apparently was tortured by the movie. It was better than the first movie. It was extremely predictable. They missed some really obvious rhyme opportunities in several of the songs. Oh, really? May I hear them? Because you said that while we were watching the movie. Yes. During the siren song, there was a rhyme to say worth. When they were talking about who's better, show who's better, you could have said prove your worth instead, and it would have rhymed, and it would have scanned better. Coming from a person who knows what she's talking about, this girl can filk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I did a fair amount of filking in my online message board role-playing game days. Yeah, those boards are long gone now. Yes. So don't bother go looking them up. And then later in the comments, wow, wow, thank you archive.org. <laughs> no, the real surprise would be if they found them because... Those aren't the names we use on this channel. And we're not saying which website. Nope. So let's get back to the movie. Because it's not as bad as the first one. What's really funny is I actually enjoyed the first one more. I enjoyed this one. But I guess it's because I'm a sucker for those kind of stories that I really, really enjoyed the first one. This one I enjoyed a lot. But it didn't hit me the same way the first one did. Well, I enjoy musicals. Though I can say, from a technical point of view, when I watched it, I could tell that technically, it's a better movie. The story is better paced, the villains are better, the overall setup is better, and we got a much more believable character out of Sunset Shimmer this time, other than I'm a stereotypical baddie. Yes, we saved that for the sirens. They were less stereotypical than Sunset was. They had some depth to them. I didn't even catch all three of their names. Sonata, Adagio, and who's the third one? I was going to say Adagio. <laughs> yeah, no. Sonata, Adagio, and I didn't catch the musically themed name of the third one. Because they only said it like twice. Are we talking about the stupid one? No, that's Sonata. Okay. And Adagio is the one with the pigtails. It's the Sunset Shimmer recolor leader that I don't know the name of. <laughs> uh... And that reminds me of something else when I say it so I don't forget. Notice that they didn't become good after they were hit. Their powers were just disabled. Yes. So no rewriting them into good people. They were still brats. They mm -hmm. were just, air quotes, powerless brats. Do not underestimate the power of mean teenage girls. Yes. From everything I've heard, it's not good. No. They're still plenty dangerous, just not in a magical way. So let's go back to the beginning and... Yeah, so the intro, which was basically, okay, let's take the entire first movie and fit it into the intro, just in case anybody forgot that all the people got together and took on this winged demon and it was cool and everything. But you gotta admit, that was a really nice intro, though, even though it was a summary of the last movie. Now, stylistically, it was nice. I was just, it was like, previously on Equestria Girls. Yeah, it feels like that with the three specials. We haven't seen them yet. Three half-hour specials, by the way. I looked them up today. Yeah, I'm still not sure why I did this. I thought I was going to be tying it to something a little more significant than we're on hiatus. <laughs> uh, so, you said you like musicals. Any of the particular songs you really enjoyed over the others? Or can you give me a grade on all the songs? Well... Trixie's was nice, actually. I enjoyed Trixie's and the Siren's first song where they started taking over the cafeteria was decent. Even though that's the one I nitpicked, they missed the rhyme. It was a good setup for the story. But the one for the montage, I think, was actually the best one, or at least the one that appealed the most to me. Then you and me agree on that. That was the first song in this movie that I was like, yeah, I like this song. This actually rocks. All of the songs I was like, eh, they're good. They're nice. I like listening to them. But that song 
and the final song between Twilight Sparkle and the Dazzlings. That's another one that really rocks. Yes, because that was the climactic battle song, so it kind of had to. And I knew that the one for the montage was your favorite because you forced me to watch it ages ago. <laughs> yeah, but apparently you didn't catch little details from it until now. Because I, I saw you go, oh! <laughs> it was Equestria Girls related. I refused to acknowledge it. And uh, you like, I'm going to do this. People are asking. People are really nice. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Especially two particular nice people. Hi, Sasami Chan. <laughs> Hi, fan of the gourmet. Yes, you can bribe us with money. Friendship also works. Uh, what Lux means is that your constant support of this channel with views and comments and recommendations should be rewarded. <laughs> we thank you for all these wonderful things you've given us yeah but now that this has happened don't hold your breath for adventure time sasami chan <laughs> uh yeah especially since i'm very very linear i would have to watch all the episodes i have trouble skipping when i know that the episodes were released in a certain order and this is why i'm a real stickler for watching the melancholy susan Haruhi in the broadcast order compared to the actual episode order it makes more sense in the broadcast order yeah even though it's completely out of order <laughs> yes but surprisingly, it flows better. But back to Rainbow Rocks. Yep. So, yeah, we have Sunset Shimmer as a fifth wheel through three quarters of the movie because even though we've all forgiven her, we can't actually integrate her into the group because the missing spot belongs to Twilight Sparkle, dang it. And that is who is going to take it. Well, they haven't really accepted the Green Ranger yet. Yeah. You guys have to understand that the Green Ranger is more awesome than all of you put together and will save your tails if you'll just let him. Mm-hmm. And yes, we're calling her the Green Ranger and not Starlight Glimmer. She's kind of the Green Ranger. Kind of. She's good and she's getting better as they write her, but Sunset Shimmer there was there first. And just because she's in a different dimension does not make her not the Green Ranger. Well, with multiple dimensions, we can have more than one Green Ranger. The thing is, we keep this whole teasing with the, air quotes, real, as in Equestria Girls Universe, Twilight Sparkle, only showing up in the end of the episodes, analyzing data, which is a foreshadowing of her eventually getting her tail over to the school. Mm-hmm. Which happens in the next movie. Oh, joy. Yes. <laughs> the expression she's giving me right now, folks, is priceless. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure there's a price on it. <laughs> I'm just not quite sure what it is. One soul, please insert here. Ah, And let's just go into extreme nitpick mode because I can. Of course you can. Okay, so if the jewels were the focus of their power, why did Star Swirl bother Switching them over to another dimension, why not just destroy the jewels? Because I think they were actually part of their bodies in the Pony universe. Also, Star Swirl the Bearded may not have fully understood that their powers was completely coming from that jewel. Because in Equestria, magic is inherent. It's in the fiber of everything. Pretty much. But still, if you're going to send someone to another dimension, and it's not Dragon Ball Z, so they're still alive... Don't you want to have somebody checking on them? Don't you think maybe you wanted to put them in some sort of cell or something? Instead of letting them wander around for all of their days? Because apparently they're immortal or something. Apparently. That or they were sent... Because there has been time differences between the two worlds. So maybe the um, when he sent them there, he sent them closer to that time period. So it's only been a couple of years for them. I don't know, they sounded pretty bored with their small-scale subsistence living. Hmm. Maybe the jewels were also keeping them immortal. So that's going to be really interesting for them. Mm-hmm. Apparently the jewels were the only reason they had good voices. Might have been some type of... Let's see, it's not guys, but that's a term. It's what fairies have. Glamour? Yes. May have been some type of glamour. Which kind of fits for dazzling. Sirens. yeah. For Sirens and Dazzlings, their show name. Mm-hmm. Uh, sounded like you had more. 
of course I have more. And this is a nitpick to go all the way back to the first movie. So the humans who are Pegasi equivalent get ears, tail, wings. The humans who are Earth Pony based get ears and a tail. The humans that are unicorn based get ears and a tail. What kind of freaking ripoff is that? Also, nice touch rarity with the Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band inspired costume for all of three seconds. Mm hmm. Then she went over to Daft Punk. Yes. And I did actually enjoy the first part of Snips and Sales segment. Snails was actually doing some pretty good hand moves there. The animation overall in this movie is amazing. The animation is very good, but a lot of the siren close-ups, I'm like, did they plan this to be in 3D? Because I feel like she's trying to reach out of the screen or something. Well, I really like that about this. There's a lot of depth to the drawings because of that. There was a couple of scenes where they were doing from behind shots out to the audience, and it felt like the Dazzlings were actually standing in front on a stage to me. It felt like they were actually there, and there was an audience off in the distance. It didn't feel flat and confined like a lot of uh, 2D art is to me. Yes, but I'm talking specifically about some of the close-ups. It's like, those just scream, I was designed to be in a 3D movie. Yeah, but it wasn't released as a 3D movie. And... Never was and never will be because the 3D format keeps surging and dying, surging and dying. Yeah, it's because no one wants it in their house. I think the only time we'll ever have 3D movies in our houses is when they finally build holodecks that people can afford. Yeah, so we're still a long ways off. But I'm sorry, all the holodeck episodes there have been where those things malfunction, I'll pass, thank you. You know that's only because they needed story elements, and the holodeck failing is a perfect story element. Yes, but you have recently seen how realistic TV can be in real life. Yeah, it was not a fun experience. Yeah, learning that sitcoms actually have a basis in reality, scary thought. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, but back to the movie we're talking about. Yes, because you see from the very beginning of seeing them practice together as a band that their friendship is being damaged. So, yeah, that's why the magic wasn't working, because they were not being good enough friends to each other. So even though they were all happy to see Twilight and, oh, okay, everything's going to be better now, it's not going to work. Also, it's not going to work because we weren't far enough into the movie. I think they were also assuming that it would just work instead of believing that it would work, which is completely different. Yes, it was more of, oh, Twilight's here now, everything will be fine, which was a huge problem for Twilight, is they're counting on her to write this counterspell and she doesn't have a clue and can't bring herself to admit it, and the closest she comes to sharing is with Sunset, but she can't admit it to Sunset because they were both Celestia's pupils, also, that scene was awesome. I'm still getting used to the idea that mods are related to Pinky. I know! <laughs> ah, I was more interested in, who really needs that much whipped cream? <laughs> that was a good one, too. Uh, I think Pinkie Pie's kind of a baker in this world as well. Yeah, but in that case, I would expect her to make her own whipped cream. Mmm, good point, good point. But still, she's Pinkie Pie. She probably has spare cans of whipped cream in refrigerated places all over the place. Kind of like how she stuck all those cookies in her hair. Yeah, that was... you. Yeah, but we're talking about Pinkie Pie here. Not that she would have magic in that world, but I'm thinking her hair is cleaner than most people's. I don't care. Also, it was a nice touch stealing the raisin specifically from one of Pinkie Pie's cookies to throw at Twilight to get her attention. And, oh joy, the return of Flash Sentry. Yeah. A, you know, every fan fiction writer's worst nightmare. A semi-canon possible relationship. Ah. Who slowly gets pushed aside. Every movie he's less in there. You'll be glad to know. Not that you're ever going to watch them. Hey, Sasami-chan, would you mind? <laughs> Yeah, how long did it take before I surrendered on this one? Let's see, when was this movie released? <laughs> yeah, because apparently from when the movie was released to right now is how long it took. The thing is, though, I managed to watch it in one sitting. 
I paused the first movie like 40 times. It took me like a day and a half to watch. Kind of like that one episode that I had the most trouble making it through. Yes, the another one of Applejack's a liar. Mm -hmm. Then there was that episode of Steven Universe, which neither of us could watch. Yeah. I tried twice, people. Twice. I keep thinking that, yeah, I'll, I'll actually go back and watch it. It shouldn't be that bad. Then I watch the beginning of it again. And the moment Steven wakes up in his body, I'm like, nope! <laughs> yeah, and I thought there was only one cringe moment. And then there's another moment. And she's like, I thought you said there was only one. I'm like, I forgot about this one. I must just skip past it of instinct. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I understand why Hasbro did it. And, you know, this one obviously got more budget. So there's improvements. It's just there's still the initial thing of you guys basically did this to compete with Monster High Dolls. And the Monster High Dolls are still way better. Mm hmm. I haven't seen any of the animations that go along with them, but I've heard great things about it. I've seen snippets, but I haven't actually watched any of it. My schedule's a little full. Yeah, so is mine. Producing this podcast and doing commissions. Yes, I'm, I'm doing a couple of commissions, but hey, Patreon. 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 It's just, just Patreon. It's right over there. Move the mouse button right there. You're almost... Why did you move away? That's not nice! Come, come back here! Ah, uh, look, stop scaring away what viewers we have left. I'm sorry. Shall we go back to the movie now? Yes, yes. And I think the overall character designs are growing on me a bit. Yeah, I think it's because they're also improving the animations. It's not as stiff as the first movie because they were getting used to those rigs for animation. Yeah, basically everyone looked as off as Twilight, who had justification to look off because she was going from being a quadruped to a biped. And did you notice that every time she got really scared or needed to feel more comfortable in her body, she went back to the whole hooves thing? Her hands would bend over like they were hooves? Yes, also bringing herself closer to the ground, also writing with the pin in her teeth, because she's... A unicorn. She wouldn't have been riding with her hoof. She would have been riding with her horn or riding with her mouth. Most of the time riding with her horn. Though she probably had to learn how to write with her mouth as part of her schooling. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we're forced to go through general ed. And even to get some degrees you have to like really? Like, do I really need to know this to do art? <laughs> no, but you're required to have basic general ed credits in order to get a degree. Also, the usual question that I have in these type of movies why does everyone want to take over a high school? Well, there's a lot of angst. And for these particular villains, angst is what they feed off of. Yeah, they feed on negative emotions. And see, the timing's interesting because we observe the sirens see that PowerPoint of magic go off that was equestrian magic. So that had to have matched up time-wise to the end of the first movie. Mm-hmm. That's what they were indicating. And it hasn't been that much time after the last movie, too. Yeah, so it was very near together. But wouldn't Sunset coming over initially have set off some Equestria Magic fireworks? Not full Friendship is Magic power of six, but there had to be some. I don't think so. When she first came over, she didn't have any power when she came through the mirror. She eventually built up power. Through manipulating people? Yes, but that's temporal power, not magical power. The portal itself is equestrian magic. Her journal is equestrian magic, but it's all on such a small scale that the sirens probably can't sense it from a distance. And I think it was less the sirens sensing the magic at that particular point, and more of like, wow, that's obviously a big thing, and then suddenly, oh, that's magic. That's equestrian magic. Yes, because apparently there's no other type of magic in any other world. I know the Sirens only have experience with the world of Equestria and the world of Equestria girls, but still. But they specifically called it Equestria magic, so there. So that means there probably is other magic. Well, we know there's other magic. It's called dark magic. Yeah, but I'm talking about other worlds magic. Because Star's World the Bearded actually knew about other worlds. 
especially if you read the little tidbit in the Two Sisters Journal, which I'm pretty sure is canon still, because nothing in the show, I think, has contradicted anything in there. No, I think the Two Sisters Journal is still pretty canon. I think the closest we got is Celestia and Luna going, we've never seen an alicorn baby before. I don't think it's specifically say alicorn baby. I think they said one hasn't been born before or, or this way before. Yeah. It was, it was pretty like, open. Yeah, it was basically even we don't know how this happened. Hasbro, cough, Hasbro. Yep. We needed a baby alicorn to sell to the babies. Well, kind of. We hope parents think it's cute and will buy it for their kids. Also, the way the sirens moved, they were very elegant in their movements. They were also very seductive. Very much the traditional lure sailors to their death because we're so gorgeous type of sirens. And a beautiful voice. and Yeah, and then their movements in the songs were very... I believe the term used for similar situations is Bollywood. Hmm. I think I vaguely remember thinking about that as I was watching those scenes. And they did have some of that imagery in there, especially when there was that one scene with the leader in front and the other girls in the back moving their arms. Yes. That was probably the most blatant example of it. But, you know, the reasons here overall seem more tangible. It's like they planned this one out instead of having to write a script really quick to produce a movie that they needed. Yes, um, thought definitely went into this, and I was just so sad that the fundraiser portion of the entire music festival just got shoved aside. Hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys raised zero dollars for your after-school programs. Because the only people that seemed to be in the audience were other students. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see parents. Parents are usually drafted to donate to fundraisers if they aren't drafted to host the fundraisers. Or help with the fundraisers. So, yeah, because it still could have been a fundraiser with the whole battle of the bands thing. You would have just publicly had all the competitions mm -hmm. like any other competitive show. Or showcase. So, any of the songs you really didn't like or thought were lower than the other ones? Well, I really wish we could have heard more of them because that was the downside to the montage. I really wanted to hear Octavia and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Wasn't that a nice reference? Yes. So, would have really liked to have heard those. Could have done without most of the songs, actually. They're just not that memorable. Though speaking of Octavia, I thought the use of vinyl scratch was very well done. Yes, because she was lurking in the background pretty much the whole movie. Of course, she never takes her headphones off. And of course, she has amazing headphones, so she doesn't hear the sound. So the impressive thing is that Spike managed to get vinyl's attention. Probably walked over to her and tap, 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 and vinyl went, look, looks around, looks, looks around, looks around, keeps feeling, tapping. Oh, hi, doggy. Goes down to pets, probably pauses the music for a second. I need your help. The dog talked. I'm going to listen. <laughs> oh, no, no way. Vinyl did not turn off her music. But yeah, there was no better ally for a band to have than vinyl. Every show needs a good DJ. Mm-hmm. Though this reminds me, I probably should have shown you some of the shorts that they did before this movie came out, specifically one that starred Vinyl Scratch. That would have been nice, but you were dragging me kicking and screaming to the movie, so. Because it was very well done. Because it's basically MLP meets dubstep through Vinyl's eyes. Because the short stars Vinyl Scratch. It's amazing. Also, he didn't drag me kicking and screaming. I went, well, people have been asking, and MLP's on hiatus. So, there you go. So, after we've gone over everything... For the most part, except we didn't really go into the design of the sirens, they were more sea serpent-like. So why do they end up as humans when they come through the portal? They were more serpent-like, which is more dragon-like. So why were they even human to begin with? Yeah, I think it depends on the person more than the species. Because I have a feeling that Dragonlord Ember wouldn't turn into a dog when she came through. I'm thinking it's more based on your personality or overall sentience like spike is kind of 
like a dog to Twilight in see he's also like a little brother at the same time so maybe that's why he came over as a dog like I said I'm pretty sure Dragon Lord Ember wouldn't be a dog on the other side she'd come through and probably be a teenager or an adult or something yeah but that's the thing it doesn't really make sense and since we only have the examples of Sunset, Twilight, and Spike going through the portal mm -hmm. at least up to this point we don't really know if it holds true across multiple examples of the same species because you know Spike could be turning into a dog instead of a humanoid just because of the type of the magic of the mirror that it was themed around ponies and doesn't know how to handle a dragon. Hmm. And it would be interesting to see what would happen with Dog Spike going through the mirror. Would he come out as a dragon spike or what? It might actually be something completely different. Yeah. Well, the thing is, would any of the Equestria Girls universe characters actually change because they're going into a world of magic? So would they need to be changed? Or is the change just something that happens as a side effect of crossing through the portal? Because we haven't seen anything from the Equestria Girls world go the other direction. N nothing from the universe has gone over except for Pinkie Pie's face. Yes, and we don't know what happened. Yeah, she just came back and went, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure all she did was stick her head in and all she saw was the fancy colors and back out because only part of her was in. Yeah, so she probably didn't make the full trip to look out the other side and go hi Pinkie Pie. Also I love that it was Taco Tuesday and apparently the sirens need real food even though they referred to the negative emotions as food. Oh that brings up I was meaning to ask even though you thought they were a little flat what do you think of them overall? Like their individual personalities, each character, how they were characterized? Uh the typical mean girls group. The leader, the snarky one, and the dits. You could even match them up as Powerpuff Girls. Blossom would be the yellow one, Buttercup would be the one with the pigtails, and Innocent Slightly Ditsy Bubbles would be Sonata. Mm. Interesting, you list off bad guys, but then you list off good guys as an example. Yes, because that was an easier trio to come across, because villains aren't usually in trios. Villains are usually solo or duo, or you have an army. So... The two minus the leader, so take Adagio and Sonata, because they have no reason to be together beyond a common goal. It doesn't even seem like they have a reason to be together to survive, unless one voice by itself isn't powerful enough for one siren to feed, and by singing together they amplify the power enough to make it so the two sirens together is more powerful than one by herself. Hmm. And why is the one the leader when Adagio obviously would much rather be the leader? And why haven't they just taken Sonata's jewel and split her power because neither of them can stand her and she's portrayed as a total airhead? Yeah, very total. I mean, to the point where, here's our evil plan. But I wasn't supposed to say that. Mm hmm. So th that was very vexing. It's like, even if that's her default personality, She's had time to learn to keep her mouth shut. You know, if she hasn't learned why she should, you would think the other two would have bullied her into it. Also, I'm glad Sunset Shimmer in that particular scene wasn't extremely dense, like a lot of other heroes who would be like, oh, they're just strange people. No, she's like, there's something definitely off about them. Yeah, and she's like, I can't quite put my finger on it. She's trying to tell five of the Equestria Girl main six. And then they do their little number, and she's like, yeah, that's what's off about them. Yeah, Piggy Pie goes, Oh, that kind of off! Yes, also Pinkie Pie, human Pinkie Pie is very hmm, aggravating. Really? Yes, the to just the tone of voice of, She's gone! Oh, that's what you meant! You remember what fun was? Fun is the exact opposite of what we're doing! Ah, I didn't pick up on that at all. Yeah, she didn't really get good positive lines. Mm. She mostly got to do state the obvious and jump to conclusions and complain about how things have gone wrong. She has an excellent point because if it's not fun, why are they doing it? But you're all friends, which means if you're doing something together, it should be fun. 
giant red flag. If you guys are not having fun, something bad is going on here. And that's not even a, you know, a Quest Dear Girls MLP universe type of thing. If you're with a group of friends and nobody's dying or in the hospital or just gotten hit by a car, odds are you're having fun. Mm-hmm. Unless it's all in a video game. Yeah, also Rainbow Dash. Could you be a bit more of a jerk? Yeah, I, I noticed something about these particular MLP versions. They haven't learned the lessons that the other versions have because of how much they were apart compared to the ones in Equestria. Pretty much haven't learned any of the lessons because Fluttershy can't stand up for herself. Rainbow Dash showboats and refuses to even allow the possibility that she might lose to the point of cheating, which is way further than Rainbow Dash ever took things. Cheating? She hit the machine to deactivate Applejack's controller. That's cheating. Oh, that. Okay, I thought you were talking about something in the actual competition, but yeah. No, in the actual competition, everyone else was cheating by sabotaging them, mm -hmm. including the sirens. Also, how did Applejack not see the magnets attached to Rarity's arm? Yeah, I could understand not seeing the wires, but how could she not notice the magnets? Because, I mean, they totally clash with the rest of the outfit. Mm-hmm. Which I'm trying to figure out, like, was that 60 era or? <laughs> Somewhat 60s, but I'm like, okay, really? It has that much metal? And also it has that much metal that's actually magnetic? So I guess it was heavy metal? Also, who even plays a guitar anymore? That is so 80s. Actually, there's a lot of guitars going on nowadays. They're making a comeback. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because... It works so well with digital music. Well, yeah, with digital music. When they first came out, it seemed kind of illogical. It was basically the pianist not wanting to be in the back of the group anymore. Mm. And then there's Revenge of the Nerds. A really good movie that has a really good scene in it where they show off a guitar. Mainly because they're all geeks and they knew how to wire everything in and it was, like, awesome. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Properly used, but as a casual instrument. Also, the whole thing with them not including Sunset the entire time. She's off on the sidelines the entire time. And Twilight was seriously failing at singing. Why not try switching out singers? Mm -hmm. Also, I think Twilight's actually a pretty good singer in her own right. I'm not talking about in the scenes where she's actually singing, singing. I'm talking about as a character. But I think she was feeling at that part is because she was like focused on her bad lyrics. And that was... That was part of it. Also, the change in the physical body. Mm. You know, singing is sustained speech, which is a little more complicated than just speaking. Hmm. It also uses different parts of the brain. This is why people who have a stutter, a lot of them can sing with no problem. Yeah. There's almost no one stutters when singing, even if they have a speech impediment that affects their normal speech patterns. So when you combine the change in physical form with the stress over the song lyrics and the part that her more analytical brain is dealing with, and she is just failing. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, Sir Moore, shall we wrap things up? I want the fan back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw you inching towards that switch. Yes. Well, if it wasn't for the extra editing you would have to do, I wouldn't have let you turn it off in the first place. <laughs> Ah, so, what are your overall thoughts? Better than the first movie. Still not really something that I would have watched on my own. Probably not going to rewatch it. I can see why people would like it, which is more than I can say for Attack on Titan. So, Rainbow Rocks wins over Attack on Titan. From Attack on Titan to Steven Universe, I put Rainbow Rocks just above Attack on Titan. <laughs> yes, I can see why people would enjoy it. It makes a lot of improvements from the first movie. And if it was a standalone and not trying to tie itself back into the Equestria world, it might be even better because they wouldn't be limited by what has already been developed in the canon MLP Equestria universe. Hmm. Well, overall, when I first watched it, I enjoyed it. Not as, like I said, not as much as I enjoyed the first one. I can actually see 
from a technical standpoint how it's better than the first one. I enjoyed the songs, especially two in particular, which you mentioned earlier. And I enjoyed the other movies, which maybe one day I'll do on my own. You know, watch them again. I'll just happen to have Ember in the room. <laughs> and I'll just happen to be reading a book. Uh, why does she have earplugs? Oh. And this has been our thoughts on Equestria Girls, Rainbow Rocks. Thank you for listening. If I didn't totally annihilate you guys by having a I'm not in love with it vibe for Rainbow Rocks, please subscribe, comment, share, like. I understand a dislike on this one, but please don't. You can also check out other videos on the channel. Most of the time we're pretty positive while still being analytical. Lots of pop culture topics, along with our Ember's Reading Room segment, looking at childhood books from an adult perspective, entertaining and educational. If you really like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, and yes, even that antique Facebook. If you really like Lux's art and want some of your own, check out his commission page. Uh, like this channel and feel that you might be able to support it financially? Check out Patreon and Ko-fi. Patreon starts at a dollar and Ko-fi at three. Thank you.